Welcome to another mini video from 2dgamerguru.com. Today I'm working in Inkscape to create a fish pond scene. I'm using circles, the node tool, gradients and the clipping mask. I start with the circle. I turn it to no fill and adjust the width of the stroke. This will be the ripples on top of the pond. I scale it up. When you scale in Inkscape, you have the option to scale the stroke with the object or to scale the object and keep the stroke the same size, which can be very handy when you want to keep consistent strokes. In this case, I want the stroke to be smaller, so I keep the toggle turned on. I duplicate and scale holding control and shift that way the scaling happens with the proportions intact and scaling towards the center of the circle. I select all circles and group them. In this case, I missed one, so I'm opening the layers and place it inside the group by just dragging it into it. By adjusting the opacity of the group as well as the outer rings, I try to create the illusion of the ripples dissipating as they go further out. Next up are the lily pads. I color them in a green with a gradient. So I select the gradient tool and pull it down. By default, it turns the same color into a transparent color. In this case, I up the alpha back to 100 and choose a darker color. When I use the node tool on a circle, I have three modifiers, two for the size top and left, and the one on the right allows me to turn the circle into a pie shape or a segment of the circle. For the lily pad, I just take the pie shape with a tiny fraction cut out, then duplicate that shape and scale it, rotate it, place it and adjust the gradients. I recolor some of the smaller ones. I changed the layer blend mode for these from normal to multiply. That way the colors mix with the background and the lily pads appear submerged. Using the node tool is a quick way to adjust the gradients. I made the gradient a little larger than my initial object. That way I can now just pull it out a little further to make some of the lily pads darker than the initial one while still using the same gradient. When working with transparency in Inkscape you have two options. You have the alpha for your colors as well as the opacity for your shapes. A quick reminder, save your file save it often. I try to remember to save right at the start. This time I forgot. It is easier to recover a file once it's been saved. Just like the regular saving of your document, working with layers is often overlooked. I find it is a big time saver when the design gets a little bit more complex. In this case I create a new layer for my fish. I turn it into a pass with the pass object to pass. That way I can now use the node tool and adjust the notes, not the modifiers. I add new notes by clicking on the curve between two notes. Using the node tool I can create an elongated and curved shape for the body. I duplicate this one and scale it. But this leaves me with uneven distance to the grey shape. So instead of scaling, I use the pass inset. I repeat that a few times and have a shape that is evenly scaled on all sides. Once I add a little blur to it, I have a perfectly shaded body for my fish. Next up are the fins. 
A new circle is turned into a pass and modified with the node tool to give it the shape of a fin. I add a gradient to transparency, which means I just take the gradient tool and drag it in the direction I want it to go transparent. In this case, I don't want it fully transparent, so I pull the gradient a little further than my shape. I duplicate the shape and create the detail. Duplicate that and scale it to create the fin on the right side. I group the shapes and again I miss one element, must be the day for it. I cut it, in this case I select the group and paste it. I duplicate the whole group and flip it vertically, place it below the fish's body and then add more detail. As you can see, I quite often duplicate things rather than create from scratch. It just feels like the faster and easier way to reuse the graphics. The ellipse of the red dot turns into the tail. I repeat the process I used for the fish's body, transforming the ellipse into a curved shape. I add a gradient to make the end of the tail transparent, rotate it, place it and duplicate it. I scale the copy, make it a little bit smaller. In order to visually attach the tail a bit better, I want to modify the white shape. In order to do that and not end up with a glow around the fish, I use the gray shape as a clipping group, cut my white part and paste it inside the clipping group. Now it's being trimmed by the shape of the gray parts and I can modify and extend the blurred white shape. I adjust the eyes and add more dots to the fish's pattern. I did speed up this part because it is just a repeat of the same process. Creating circles, scaling them and rotating them slightly, making them a little thinner towards the sides of the fish. With all parts created, I can now refine the placement a bit, make the fish a little smaller and rotate it. I just find it easier to create more complex parts when they are aligned horizontally or vertically rather than work with an angle. I just turn the whole layer with the fish. I cut the group with the ripples and place it in a new layer above the fish. I lower the opacity of the fish layer just a little bit to give it a slightly blue tint to make it look submerged. I also need to move the green non-submerged lily pads to be above the ripples. I nearly forgot and it looked quite odd. And that's my fish pond with a koi created solely using the circle as the base shape, modified it with the node tool, added gradients, used one clipping group and a little blur on that white shape inside. You can always add more detail, add scales, refine the lily pads or adjust the ripples. There are some tutorials on my blog, you might want to have a look at those. If you like this video, 
and learn something new, please subscribe to my channel, turn on the notification icon, leave a like and let me know what you want to see on my channel or in the blog and I will see you again soon.